imprint When out from Lancaster's womb, my mother wrapped me in a patchwork quilt of tobacco, corn, and barley fields. Her manicured geranium and marigold beds hemmed in my playpen yard. Years later, when cicadas chittered and whirred from the locust and the maple in stereo, their empty nymph shells became imagination's plaything. My hands skimmed them across the dry summer grass to other worlds. Armed with a mason jar in the settling evening, I pursued fireflies. White cats leapt pirouettes after their dying glow. Bats dove kamikaze style toward hurled stone missiles in their path. Those nights, camping tentless in the shadowed yard, my back pressed against the sheets soaked in the dank dew grass. The starry night speckled through the Concord arbor leaves. Along with the Pleiades, those seven sisters, I heard the bullfrog's deep croak from my father's pond and the crickets chirping in the cocklebur brush worn as I drifted off to sleep. Do not forget us. Do not forget. So let me tell you a little bit about the story behind Imprint. This is a story about origins, about how when we grow up, no matter the situations and settings we find ourselves in, these are out of our control. I mean, we're born and we're thrown into families, some of them good, maybe some of them not so good, but with experiences that define us. And so my experience is in the womb of Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. And I grew up surrounded by tobacco, uh, by corn, by barley fields. My father, I remember when we first moved onto the farm I live on now, we raised tobacco. We raised it for two years. In the Mennonite church, there was this ethical quandary through the Mennonites saying, should we raise tobacco or not? We know it's doing harm to people's bodies. And so after two years of raising it, my father decided not to raise it. But I remember helping plant the tobacco and do that sort of thing much earlier on. My mother, even to this day, still loves her flower beds. And they're very manicured, and there's geraniums and marigolds and many other flowers there. And these all sorts of images define my early childhood. I grew up fairly poor. Most of my early clothes were made. We raised most of our own food as a family just because it was so expensive to live in the 70s when I was growing up. We had toys, but outdoors was also very much our playpen. In the summer here in the farm, especially late spring, early Sunday, you hear the cicadas just begin to chitter and they whir and they make all sorts of noise. As kids, we would take the shells that they hatched from and then we would play, play with them, like create little armies of shells. Or uh, in my case, many times I pretended they were spaceship because they looked kind of alien and I loved spaceship and science fiction. And, and so they would literally transport me to other worlds other than the farm I was living on. I think in the part of the poem where I'm talking about fireflies, I think this is an image that many kids do, at least my son did, I certainly did, uh, where we went out and caught fireflies and you'd stick them in a jar. In our case, it was a mason jar with a metal lid and we would punch holes in the top so they could breathe because after all, we weren't sadistic. But we would do that and that was part of the shared experience. I remember my mother having this white cat and when the fireflies would flash their light these cats would jump up after them trying to catch them. And so that's kind of where that line, that white cats left pirouettes after their dying glow, they're just leaping up trying to catch these things. And one of the other images I have growing up at the farm is we have an old attic. It was hard to seal off, so we had bats in the attic, right? And the bats would fly out, and at night we would take these little tiny stones and we would throw them at the bats not to hit them, but so they would think it was an insect and dive after it. And we thought that was great fun. And it was one of the images that's kind of caught in there. And these are the images of childhood that kind of define me. And I think the final stanza of this 
po poem talks about the times that my brothers and I would go out and sleep under the stars. We had a tent, but we'd sleep under the maple tree or we would go up behind the grape arbor that still stands. I'll try to shoot a picture in of it. But this grape arbor, we would lay underneath, stare up through the leaves at the stars, and you would hear in the far distance the croak of the bullfrog from my father's pond that he put in. He had two ponds in the property and then crickets kind of chirping there. And I loved the stars going, I still do. Uh, and I used to memorize all these constellations and the Pleiades was one of them and they made it into this poem here. And I think this entire poem is a warning. And I think these things, these, the, the, the fireflies, the bats, the cicadas, the bullfrogs, and the images of my childhood, I'm being warned in a sense. Don't forget us. Don't forget where you came from. Don't forget your past. Even if it hasn't been a good past, don't forget it and allow it to shape who you are today. And so that's the poem imprint and kind of what came out of that poem.